Great. Okay. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Trisigas uh, to another great event here, and it gives our gives me great pleasure to introduce a um, fellow friend, uh, Mr. Keith Chaston, who is a trained hypnotherapist, um, among other things. <laughs> and he's going to give his experience, view, knowledge on the subject of hypnosis and also past life regression. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay, so um, he's the expert, so I'm just going to leave him to it and say, uh, welcome Keith. And Thank you. Take it away. Thank you, Dave. That was a lovely introduction. Do you know what? This afternoon it's so wonderful to be here. I'm like a little kid being here because I'm, it's like a, a wonderful reunion being and seeing everybody again. All my old friends, you know, that I haven't seen for such a long time. So many of you. And Hayley wishes she could have been here, but she was unable to be here this afternoon. But uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this wonderful occasion. I have to say, before we start, that you are a wonderful group of people. The fact that you um, are continuing, you know, to do this work, you know, where it's so needed at this time. The truth seems to be something that is being pushed out of the way, doesn't it, right now? Mm. So, um, I think you're absolutely wonderful, all of you, for continuing this work in we this agree. way. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, we agree with that. and I want you to know that I support you 100% in all the work that you do. So, I, I, I just wanted to, to say that before we start. Thank you. Um, right, so, um, I've had quite an amazing experience, really, to be honest, in my life. My whole life, really, has been quite a... A lovely journey. I think when I was in the higher realms before it was time to come down here, I sort of they said, you know, it's time to come down, you've got to come down at this time of the ascension because your energy and everybody else that's here as well is going to be needed. And I said, well, all right, I'll come down if I can play. <laughs> if I can play in doing what I'm, what I'm doing then I'll be quite happy to come down and be here for a little bit. So, that's what I've done all my life. I've never worked for anybody in my life. I've been self-employed since I left school. And my journey for many, many years, I was playing uh, entertaining. Um, I was in Jersey for seven years. And part of my work then, actually, was to do with hypnosis. As an entertainer, part of my work was... Um, to do with uh, using hypnosis, and I learned to do it in my 20s, you know, about you know, 20 years ago. And, um, <laughs> and so, it's been a part of me all this time, all my life really, is, the hypnosis, and I learned how powerful it was and how amazing it was in my 20s, so that not for then, I didn't really need it then so much as I do now, because now it's so important the hypnosis, because it's going to be a great tool to be used. Oh, there you go. Well, that's nice. It's got some nice energy in that. I'm sure. Because I bought, I bought me books in that box. Um, it's, the, it's the box off a of seat. <laughs> yeah. So, this afternoon, it's a nice opportunity, actually, to explain uh, and explore some of the, the journey that I've had uh, specifically with the hypnotherapy, the past life regression. Also something else I want to talk to you about a little later is to do with uh, spiritual hypnosis which I use a huge amount these days and I'll explain all about what that, that is. Uh, also I, I run three groups every week, uh, three nights a week. Um, and they're wonderful groups, and they're on Zoom at the moment. And it doesn't interfere with um, this group, because Hayley said she wanted to start, you know, coming again to the group. Mm -hmm. Now that she feels happy on Zoom and that. Um, and uh, the groups, I'll explain a little bit about those as well. And, you're, you know, anybody's very welcome to join in. They're free of charge, because they're like volunteering. It's finding out information and things. But first, um, I'd like to talk about get the glasses here. Uh, reincarnation. 
Now this is something that when we were kids, I mean we were brought up, weren't we, um, believing that when we were created, we were sort of born then, that was the first uh, time that we were alive according to the Western religions. Um, and as a soul, we were born then. Our soul was created along with our physical body, basically. And that's what we were taught. Now, when I was young, I was brought up in the church three times on a Sunday, every Sunday. We used to Sunday school in the morning, Bible class in the afternoon, and then big church in the evening. And in the mornings, you were taught um, that Jesus was love and unconditional love. And in the evening, the preacher would get up and say, yes, if you don't believe that, you know, you won't go to where you're, where you're supposed to be going. So even at the age of 10 or 11, I found that very, very difficult to get my head around. And so I used to talk, even then, to some of the elders in the church and, and, say, and explain to them that it didn't really make very much sense. So when I was 16, I decided when I was able to leave the church behind... Um, I was able to make my own choice and I can remember to this day saying, right, right, this is the moment when I'm going to go on a journey and I'm going to find the truth. I want to know what is and what isn't. I want to know whether, that's, whether it's right or wrong and I'm going to find my way to whatever it is. So if there is a God, I'm going to find out. If there isn't, I'm going to find out. And that's been my whole journey really all through the years and I knew even at the age of five or six because of the church that they were saying Jesus is coming back and he's going to come back and they were sort of saying well when is it going to be and they said well sort of the end of the century and so this time now I've always been prepared for and I can remember skipping around the playground at five and six going, Jesus is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that. It's amazing. So I've been ready for this moment, really, all my life. And it's very special. And I, and I have to tell you that one of the groups that I run, which is called the Ascension Group, which is what this is all about at this time, we've found out some really interesting information a little later on. I'm going to explain it all to you. So we're going to have a break, uh, uh, about which should lead us nicely up to about six o'clock, and then <laughs> right. reincarnation. So it's something really that's only come into the public domain, I suppose, in about the last you know thirty years or so, um, and. It was something that I've always been hugely keen to work on. And when I started doing it, it was quite amazing. And now I've done well over a few thousand uh, uh, regressions. And they've all been so fascinating. And some I've written about, and I will explain that to you a little later on. Um, but reincarnation is something, of course, that many millions, billions of people in, in the eastern part of our planet believing, but in the west it's not something that's really took much hold yet. Little bits here and there, people hear some stories and think, oh that's interesting, maybe there's some truth to that, you know. But there's a lot more people now coming forward who are wanting to have a regression. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how a regression can help you, uh, what it can do for you, why you would have one. Um, and uh, trying to explain everything about regression to you, right? Because regression is a can be a key to finding out why and who you are, the person you are today. Because remember, who you are today, you've only been for you know most of us here not that many years really, but all our past lives added together will add up to thousands of years that we've been alive and around. And so you can imagine that your subconscious, which I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, which holds all the information about our past lives, that, um, that information in our past life, excuse me a moment, let me just go to here. 
So, what is the purpose of a past life and how can it help you in your present life? Right. Thirsty, why would you have one? Some people come to me because they're very curious. They think, mm, maybe I've had a life. I've heard about past life regression. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. And so they'll come and they'll, they'll sit and they'll have a past life out of curiosity, which can be very interesting. Um, another reason for having past lives is because of issues and problems that you have. And many issues and problems, and I've written about many of them in the books, um, so I'm, I'm trying not to, to say things that I haven't written about because I wouldn't want you, if you did decide to get one of the books, to read it and think, oh, he talked about all that in, the book, in, in his talk. So I'm trying not to do that, to do that you know. Uh, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of, it's just sort of trying to remember them. To be honest. Um, so what I've done here, I haven't, I'm not reading anything, but I'm, I've just made a few headings so it keeps you right. Because one of the problems that I have is I go off, uh, what I'm supposed to be talking about a little bit. So if I've got a heading, and if I stick to the heading, it means I won't wander off, otherwise we will be into a six <laughs> um, Another one, which I'll talk about to do with the books, because this is, this is to do with that. Uh, why you feel the way you do, and about going home. And this is such an interesting one. Whenever I listen to people, I listen to people a lot, and... I listen to what they say, and sometimes they say, oh, you know, when I went to so-and-so, uh, it felt like when I went there to that country or to that place in this country, it felt like I was going home, you know? And uh, that feeling very often is one that is there from your subconscious mind because you did live there. You might not have lived there in this lifetime, but there's a good chance, there's an 80, 85% chance that you really did live there in a past life. It may be that the feeling you get is because it's like where you used to live in a past life. But the chances are it's because you did live there. And I've got many examples and I'm going to talk about one in a little bit that's to do with the book. Okay, but I won't talk about that by now. Um, issues like anxiety. Right, I can put that down since I've got a head in there. <laughs> so, Anxiety is a good one. A lot of people feel anxious. And um, a lot of the anxiety actually has come from past lives and is still with you. Because in a past life, if you had a lot of anxiety or if you died in a very traumatic way, which many people did, you know, um, you find that that hasn't been resolved, that anxiety hasn't been resolved and it's still with you and you bring it forward. Now I'll give you a really good example, one that I haven't written about. So um, this is a lady in Blythe and I went to, there's a shop there uh, called Sent From Heaven, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice people and I often go, or haven't for a while, but you know, used to get asked to go along and do a lot of regressions with people. And there's this one young lady who was about 25. And when I walked in, she was sat down there. And what, what I noticed was that she was constantly anxious. Um, you could sense it, feel it, and, and see the anxiety that was part of her. And when she went into hypnosis, uh, and she connected straight away, and she said, oh, I'm a little girl, and um, I'm six years old. And I'm like, a princess. And she said, uh, oh, and, and, then, and then it started coming to her. Once you start connecting, and I will explain this quite a bit to you in a little bit, um, that she connected to being a little girl of six years old, and she said, oh, I'm a, I'm a Viking. I'm a Viking princess in my village, she says. Um, it's a Viking village and we often get uh, marauders and we get invaded sometimes. Now, she had an older brother, she discovered pretty quickly on, and everything started to come to her. So it's a bit like when you go into hypnosis, you take a step back. You who you are now, take a step back. I want to try and explain it to you in a little bit. This isn't the moment to explain it properly to you, but it's a bit like you... Uh, and who you are 
step back so that the person who is um, you are going back to in a past life steps forward and takes over. Now, what is very interesting is, if I was to say to you, close your eyes and go back to when you were a teenager, everybody could probably do that, and you would think of that memory or that experience as a memory, wouldn't you? But that's not what past life regression is like. It isn't. Some people would say it is, but it, it, you're not retrieving a memory from the past. It's a lot more than that. What it is, is, and how can I explain this to you? Um, there was a lady quite a while back when I was doing some regressions in a shop in Darlington. There was um, uh, a shop called the Unicorn Tree. A lovely lady that runs it. And I used to go up every month and do about four or five regressions in, in, a, in a day, one after the other. And then finish in the evening with a, a group um, doing uh, uh, meet your spirit guides and loved ones and angels. Now what I wanted to say was that maybe after a break, if we've got time, if there was a few volunteers, we could maybe have a demonstration, if you'd like that of some spiritual hypnotherapy. So have a think now, I'm glad I've mentioned it now, so you have a think about whether you like the idea or not. And if you do, if you're up for it, you can come up and we'll, we'll have a little demonstration session. Okay. Um, so, the spiritual hypnosis, let me just go back to where I was. I'm getting old, you know. Um, um, oh yeah, I was talking about the Viking girl words. See what I mean when you start <laughs> when you start wandering off. So please forgive me. You know, I know you. I know you do. Um, so this Vi this Viking girl, when she got a bit older, she said, um, "I was told that I had to marry a certain person, and I didn't want to. I wanted to be a warrior like my brother. So I got my brother to teach me how to be uh, a warrior." with the sword and everything else. And we discovered from that moment where the anxiety came from. And it's really interesting. It wasn't the fact that she died in battle, although she did. It was the fact that one of the duties of the Vikings in their village was to guard the place. And so her job was to constantly be a lookout. And so she was constantly looking around to make sure that no, and, and being a, a woman of course it was extra difficult because she was a woman and, and if, any, if, if she'd let invaders in, oh well you know, do you see what I mean? Doesn't it make sense though? Does that make sense to you? That um, it's the fact that she was on lookout and constantly having to look out for, that that has been brought back with her in this lifetime. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. Mm -hmm. And we find that out on a daily basis, all this stuff. Um, but, and and what, what I should say after that is that because we found that out, once it's gone from the subconscious part of our mind to the conscious part, it just generally will let it go. Mm -hmm. And you know, two weeks later she emailed me and she said, it's gone. I don't feel that anymore because she understood where it had come from. Isn't that interesting? It's fascinating. Can you see how I enjoy playing and doing this work? Because you're finding out such a lot of amazing things, you know. It's funny, Keith, because we think that's why Gary, John's partner, is frightened of bridges, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's frightened of bridges. When and you we drive think... under a bridge, he goes right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we think he's probably yeah. fell from a bridge. Well, it only started when he hit a certain age. Yeah. And then, and ah, mm. right. Okay. Mm. Well, that's, yeah, well, I, I would suggest, well, talking about a certain age, that, that there's so much truth mm. to that. So many things will happen. Because when you think about it, I, I will give one little one. It's only a little half a page in the book. Um, of, and it's to do with, with the, um, uh, the age thing. Right. A lady came to me, again, this was many years ago now, but in, um, for anxiety, not only anxiety, for um, depression and for um, 
panic attacks. And she went, and now, she wasn't the sort of person that would do a past life. I have to be careful sometimes because they'll start telling me these things uh, before the session and say uh, these are the issues and problems. Um, but they've come to me as a clinical hypnotherapist rather than to do a past life. But I know it's all spiritual stuff really that we need to deal with, you know. Um, and so I had to be tread very carefully. So I just said to her, and as I said it to her, I knew I was talking to her subconscious mind. And I said, let's find the cause, you know. Let's just find that cause of what it is. And her mind took her straight back to a past life. So she, it, we, she didn't just go to a place in her mind that, um, where we could do some work to try and clear the anxiety. Because the problem is, you see, if that anxiety is there, it could be there for a reason. It could be there because it's trying to somehow protect you. Mm -hmm. Think of the fear of heights. Mm -hmm. Think of if you died um, in a past life from falling off something. right? So you're in this life. Now your subconscious mind thinks of what happened in past lives as yesterday. It doesn't think of it as hundreds or even thousands of years ago, it thinks of it as just yesterday. And so it says, remember yesterday, you died falling off something, don't go up a height, and if you do start going up a height, what happens? You start feeling. Now I believe it's the same fear that you felt when you actually fell off whatever it was. That fear that you felt then, so it's not just any old fear, it's the same fear that your subconscious mind is bringing to you to try and keep you safe because the one thing that I've discovered more than anything else that the subconscious mind is trying to do is to keep you safe. From moment to moment, it's looking around and, uh, and saying, right, is, is where we are now, is it safe, is everything okay? It's trying to keep you safe. So, this lady, yes, she went back and she said, oh, she had to look at herself, she said, oh, she says, I'm a little Mexican man, she said. <laughs> and she said, uh, then she realised she was in a boat. And she said, oh, oh, she said, there's a storm coming up. So it didn't take her through the whole thing, it just took her to where the anxiety, the depression and the panic attacks came from. And he then said, I don't think I'm going to be around for much longer. Um, and before we passed, I asked him how old he was. And he said, uh, I'm 39. Now, he actually drowned. And can you imagine, it must be an awful, awful experience to, to drown. Very deep water. And she also had to come because the reason that she was so depressed and miserable was that his soul had never gone into the light. His soul was still there in the water, you know, uh, feeling terrible. And she need, we needed to do a soul rescue, which I'm going to talk about as well in a little bit, because I think we have plenty of time. <laughs> um, so, so when she came out of it, I said to her, I hope you don't mind, I shouldn't ask a lady her age, should I? I said, but can you tell me how old you are? She said, I'm 40. Now, when it happened, she got that anxiety a year ago. She said, she said when she came, I've only had it a year, I don't know why I've got it. All this depression, it suddenly came over me. And that's why, because in her past life, she drowned exactly at the age that she was when she got the um, anxiety. Isn't that amazing? It really is. Um, so, yeah, another one. Let's think of the issue of OCD. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't written about any of those OCD in a book, so I can tell you about this one. Why do you think, what, why do you, th you see, OCD isn't something that would just happen, you know. I mean, maybe, maybe, you know, you could have some thoughts that would suddenly compound and these thoughts would then sort of start to take over and then you would start thinking, oh, I can't get rid of it. Maybe, yeah, I, I, will, I will give the psychiatrist that. But my experience is that things like OCD, imagine that you have this feeling, you have to put the knives and forks and spoons in exactly the right place. 
Now, why, where do you think that's come from? That's come from being a servant or being a slave. But the problem is that in today's society, it's fine. You can be a, a waitress, as you said, or a servant of some sort. And you, you wouldn't get uh, wronged uh, if you put things in the wrong place. But hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, it was fatal. It was, you would get either beaten to death or... In many circumstances, I have come across this where people haven't put things in the right place and they've been taken out and killed or they've been made to, to leave and, and die because there's nowhere for them to go. So you can imagine in this lifetime, because of you were so, you know, having to put them in the right place, you can imagine, because it was just, like I said, that happened yesterday, Remember when that happened yesterday? You've got to get these in the right place. And that's why it's a, a thing that you have to do. Because it's what you had to do in that life. And, not and, and it was compounded because it wasn't just once or twice. You had to do it all the time. So doesn't that make sense? Yeah. Um, okay, so there's a few examples of why you might have a, a past life regression. Uh, another one is physical pain. Now that's, that's a physical pain. Now, yes, there were many reasons, of course, for physical pain. I, I would say that 95% of physical pain uh, is emotional pain. I absolutely would believe that. Um, emotional pain that has turned to physical pain. Because what emotional pain does, it, it sort of finds a weak part of your body. Okay? And that weak part of your body is where the emotional pain will reside. Now, it may be, it may be that uh, something has happened in this lifetime, which is fine. Which uh, I've had, for instance, somebody many years ago now had terrible pain in their right knee, and I was down in um, uh, where was I? Plymouth at the university there, doing some talks on EFT, the, the tapping therapy. And uh, I can remember this guy and his wife coming up to me and saying that he'd got, well, she was doing the talking for him and saying, that my husband's got this terrible pain in his knee, is there anything you can do for it? And I said, yeah, absolutely, of course we can. You know, and she said, go and find a corner with this man and go and sort it out. So anyway, we went and found a corner and started, now, I said, so how long have you had this pain in the knee? He said, and he, he was limping with his pain, limping with it, 27 years. And he said, uh, yeah, 27 years I've had this pain in my knee. And I said, can you tell me what was going on in your life 27 years ago? And he knew exactly what it was. He knew exactly what had, what had happened. I can't remember now what it was, but that doesn't matter. Whatever it was, we tapped on it. Even though blah 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 blah, and suddenly I said to him, "Just check your knee for me." And he went, "Hmm, oh." And his word was, "Never forget." He said, "That's spooky." <laughs> and he started going like this. And six months later, I was able to contact them, and he still hadn't got it. He still hadn't got it. So it wasn't like it was a placebo or something. How amazing is that? So. <coughs> We know, for just from that one thing, the emotional, it was even an emotional problem that he had at that time, 27 years ago. It was something in his life that was very emotional, and that emotion, he hadn't been able to let it out, and it had gone down to his knee, which was already a weak part of him. And so, doesn't that make sense? Mm -hmm. See, this is what's so fascinating about this. It does make sense. Now, I love science. I love science, absolutely. I mean, you know, going a bit out of it now, um, I come from, and my daughter Hayley does as well, comes from a, a little Sirius B. That's where we come from. Um, not the big Sirius in the sky, but the little Sirius B, which is a water planet, and uh, it's um, lots of lovely exotic animals there, and uh, a very scientific planet. So that's why I love science, uh, and I love finding out things, but I love finding out things that are true, that are my truth. So I, I would never 
want to, to, to say anything that I didn't feel was absolutely right and that doesn't seem to make any sense. You know? um, right, let me just have a look at this. Let's see what the next one. So, physical pain, we've done that one. Oh, yes, I must quickly tell you this one. Um, hmm, this is another one. A lady, I hadn't, how long, I hadn't been doing that long actually at the time, but it was about 15 years ago. A lady with a um, a stick, and she was only in her 20s, she found it hard to walk, and she walked into my therapy place, and um, she wanted a past life, she had a past life, but she wanted to know about, was her knees that were in a terrible condition, was it anything to do with a past life? And so, we asked the question to her higher self when we got there, and the higher self said yes. And I said, would, so it wasn't the life she went back to. She, they, she wasn't shown that life. So we asked this question to her higher self, and her higher self said yes. And she was suddenly shown a scene of her in a battle <coughs> with another soldier in this very ancient battle. It went back a long time. And uh, in that battle, this other soldier crushed both this soldier's knees. And because it was never resolved, in that lifetime, of course, you know, you would die in the battle, you know, chances are you would go to a certain dimensional level, come back, and it just wasn't resolved. And so it brought it back in this lifetime to be resolved. Now, something that I find really interesting is, do you have to keep these um, issues for every lifetime until they're resolved? So if, for instance, um, there was a lady who had a, a spider phobia. Now, this wasn't part of why she came to see me, but it's just something we discovered during the thing. And I'm going off a little bit here, but why am I going off? Because, <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I'm going off because um, I'm, I'm, oh, Oliver. <laughs> um, Yes, the lady in the ancient battle, that's where I am, so I'll stay with that one. <laughs> lady in the ancient battle. So, she um, had her knees crushed. Now, two weeks later, she emailed me and said, my knees are 40% better. I thought, wow, that's wonderful. And she said, I've been, actually been able to get up a ladder and help my daughter, because there was just the two of them, and um, being able to decorate her, her bedroom. So that was something she'd never been able to do before. So that was something that I always questioned. All right, I would look up to higher realms, which I still do, and say, why is that? Why is that? Why only 40%? You know, why couldn't we get more than 40%? Because we got the healing on the day that they, the angels gave, of 40% of healing. But they said, we can't, we're not, we can't do everything. We're not there to actually do it for you, but we are there to assist and help. So they couldn't do all the healing. And so I sort of got that a bit, but I still sometimes look up and say, come on, let's have a little bit more. You know? <laughs> um, I mentioned the spider. Yes, this is, this is what I was going to say. Right, see if you can remember this. Now, um, if something happened, say 2,000 years ago, and it was an issue, and you hadn't resolved it, do you have to keep it in every life until, you know, and, until you resolve it? And I thought, well, is that true or not? And I feel that the answer is that when you decide to come back into um, this lifetime, or any lifetime, you then decide what that lifetime is going to, what you're going to have in that lifetime. And you might all your contracts. Now contracts, yeah, see, see there you go again. <laughs> contracts are so fascinating. They've come up a lot lately. Now, years ago, contracts never came up. <coughs> we knew about them, and they mentioned them sometimes. But contracts never really were mentioned in the higher realms. Now, what are they? Well, if, Many of you have probably heard of that, but when you come down here, you sort of write these, or agree to certain things in your life. And uh, these contracts are very closely kept.
kept in this lifetime, people that you've agreed to, to meet up with in this life, um, certain things you've agreed to, to do. Um, somebody, just a couple, this is a, an interesting one, because just a couple of weeks ago, uh, the contract came up, because I, I was sort of going on a little bit to that their higher self, trying, you know, a bit cheeky in a way, but trying to get them to um, do something. <laughs> And eventually the higher self said, we can't because of the contract. <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay, right, here we go. So they said, I said, well, and then he said, mm, well, look, sometimes, you know, if I can give you an analogy, remember this is a higher self talk, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, the higher self is saying, um, well, uh, this contract might be a, a bit like your government, you know, when your government makes a new law and then and then maybe about 30 years later it might go back and make a few changes or additions or you know what I mean take a few bits out that aren't appropriate anymore he said maybe we could do something like that and I thought oh there you go so it's worth <laughs> it was worth having a, well, you know keeping on about it so anyway he got I said how can we do this he said well we need a scribe so they went and found a scribe. Everything seems a bit old-fashioned up, up in the higher realms, you know. And they got this scribe and he started making these alterations in the contract. It's really interesting, you know. Um, so I think that we don't have to keep everything uh, and resolve everything in that, in that lifetime. If we're up in the higher realms and we've got... I was going to mention the spider because this lady, 2,000 years ago, she went back to... Um, being in Carlisle and she had a lot of land, his big farmers she was, uh, married to this uh, farmer and um, they had this big barn and one day she was walking in this barn, it was in Roman times and this huge big spider come and jumped on her head and it absolutely terrorised her, it was awful and that fear has stayed with her for 2,000 years because it wasn't something, as I said, she came for, but it was something because suddenly she, she sort of leapt up in the chair and said, oh my God, this is just that. Now, she said, I realise where that spider phobia has come from. Mm. For 2,000 years she held on to that. <laughs> I mean, how amazing. I mean, like you can imagine it was a very frightening experience. But what I was interested to know was, has she kept on, kept hold of that in every lifetime? Has she been frightened of spiders? in her next life, or the next life, or because there would have been probably at least 50 or 60 lives in between that life and this one. Because remember, well, think on, you know, we have had hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of lives, if not thousands of lives. And remember that before you were here, before you started to reincarnate on the earth, you would have been in other, other planets. Your soul has been around the whole galaxy. You've left bits of you all over the place, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it is so exciting to think, and I'm, I'm going to talk about it shortly, not quite yet, but um, about the uh, ascension and everything, um, and, and the galactics and everything, because that's really interesting. Uh, but let's carry on with the, because uh, I'm only up to this little bit, so <coughs> I'm in. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, this is interesting as well. And, and, excuse me if you were asleep there. Um, if you uh, have something that you feel that you're lacking a little bit in this lifetime, let's I'll talk about confidence, say, because that's a really good one, because a lot of people come for confidence. Um, and confidence is uh, something that, when you go into a past life, I ask the higher selves, I say, look, this person needs a little bit more confidence. So, could you please go and find a life where they were so confident? And the higher self, I said, is that okay? Do you, would that be, and they generally say, yes. And they go off and they find a life where that person, who's having the past life aggression, uh, has lived before, but is hugely confident in that lifetime, but not in this one, you see. And this one... Uh, Lass came with her mum, and before we started, she said, you know, I'm 30 now, and 
I really want to settle down and have some children, but I can't speak to boys. And I feel I really need to be able to speak to boys, to be able to get married and have a family. And she and her mum was going, hmm, you know. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> so anyway, when we got to Higher Self, the Higher Self went off to try and find a life where she'd been really confident. And suddenly there was a smile on her face, you know, sitting in the chair there. And uh, I said, um, so what life have you found for it? And she said, I'm a saloon girl. <laughs> and I'm in America. And I'm serving everybody and I'm speaking to everybody and I feel great. So what I did was, I, what I always do is we attach in a certain little technique that um, confidence that she felt then, in that life, to uh, herself in this lifetime. And then, when I brought her back out afterwards, she opened her eyes, and the first thing she said, and she looked across at her mum and said, I'm going out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Bless her heart. Yeah. Didn't get a job, and where the spoons did she? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so I'm going to move on now to, so, all right, past life regression, so what is the actual procedure? So, um, can I just say what I meant to say right at the beginning, actually, I forgot, was if anybody wants to mention anything or, or, or make a comment or ask a question, please feel free to do so at any time, because I always feel if we leave it to right at the end, you've forgotten what your question was, <laughs> you know, and so... Can, um, can I just go back to the EFT? Yeah, yeah, of but, um, I had EFT when I was uh, having Greek counselling and my husband died, and it was amazing. And I'm mm. sure some people don't know what EFT stands for. Could you explain that? Yeah, please? absolutely. Um, EFT is a, a tapping therapy. It was developed by a psychiatrist called Roger Callahan, who in America, in about 35 years ago, he was seeing a lady called Mary, and Mary had a, a very serious water phobia. She couldn't go anywhere near water without getting very sick, very ill, uh, from the age of five. Now again, it could have been a past life thing. I have always had the feeling that when it was described, that although nobody ever knew what it was, I felt that it was from this life actually, and that it was something like being down in the like on the beach with your brother or sister uh, and it oh, would only take an extra couple of seconds when say a brother would push you under the water keep you there just a slightly more than and the fear would then be so powerful you know although it wasn't actually fatal but anyway she had been talking to the psychiatrist Roger Callan for, for 18 months every week for a year. Now that's a long time. You know, a lot of therapy. A lot of therapy. Yeah, I don't think I'd get away with that, to be honest, in my, my work. But anyway, um, so uh, this one day, now Roger Callahan, he followed a certain path, and this is something else I wanted to mention actually. There are so many little things that I wanted to say today. Um, one of them was about truth and belief, and holding on to a belief. Now, as truth seekers, we are after the truth. We want to know what the truth is. So we need to be open to all that is, and I don't like to use the word beliefs. I like to think that what I have are understandings, rather than a belief, because a belief you seem to have to hold on to a belief, whereas an understanding seems to be a little bit more flexible, you know? And so I always like to think, right, I have understandings, not beliefs, so that then I can be open to everything, uh, and not somebody say something and I think immediately, no, I can't accept that because that doesn't go with my beliefs. But if you have understandings, then you can say, yes, I'm open to that, and you can allow your own judgment, your discernment, uh, to decide whether you feel that you, you want to take it on board as another understanding or not. Some of your understandings over the years will fall away, 
and other ones will come and you know become part of your understandings. You see, so I've always felt that beliefs lead to fundamentalism and all that sort of thing. So you really need to just be totally always open. You know, because remember, you know, we're moving into a new dimension shortly. You know, mm. this is so exciting. Um, so I've waited a long time for it, <laughs> and I don't think it's going to be that long now. Um, so, I was talking about um, EFT. 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 Yes. <laughs> you see what I mean? You see what I mean? It's easily done. It's easily in Hinduism, done. they say. Oh, beg your pardon. In Hinduism, they say uh, the golden age is going to start in 2023. Wow. wow. But that's that's sooner than I thought. Wow, that's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, it is 2023. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for that. Mm. Bless you. Thank you. Um, so, EFT, yeah. So, Roger Callahan was seeing Mary, and this one day, so, Roger Callahan, although being a psychiatrist, he was open to other uh, therapies, not just psychiatry. So, which was amazing. Holistic therapies as well, you know. And one of them was acupuncture. Now, this one day, Mary said to Roger Callahan, she said, um, when I feel, think about the fear of water, I feel it in my tummy, in my stomach. Now, he knew that the meridian for the stomach ended underneath the eye. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And so he said, come here, Mary. And he started tapping her underneath the eye here. And after about a minute, she said, um, oh, I feel fine. Now, being in America, he had a swimming pool in his back garden, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And she ran out of the house, ran down to the swimming pool and started splashing in the water. Something she'd never, ever been able to do before. And so, um, within 20 minutes, she was in the shallow end, wading up to the deep end. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So he had that, what you think of as a wow moment. He had the wow moment, and he spent and dedicated the next 10 years of his life to putting together um, a thing that he called, at the time, thought-filled therapy. Uh, TFT. So if you hear of TFT, it was like the forerunner of uh, mm -hmm. EFT. And then, after 10 years, he sort of put all this together and he started to um, uh, teach others. And he used to charge thousands and thousands of pounds to, to teach people how to, about this. Because it, it was new stuff and it worked really amazingly. And one of the people that came to him to be taught was a gentleman called Gary Craig, and he was a Harvard engineer. And he said, after sort of learning and training in this stuff, he said, well, look, why don't you put everything into one order? Because what was happening with TFT is, if you had, say, migraines, if you went, if you want, went to a therapist for migraines, you were tapping a certain way on the, the acupuncture point. Uh, and then if you went for, say, your pain in your knee, you were tapping a different order. So there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different orders of the acupuncture points that you were tapping that he felt you needed to do in that order to make it work. And Gary Craig, as an engineer, was thinking in a different way. And he said, well, put them all together. Tap on all of them. So there was about 14 of them. And do it the same every time. And that's where EFT came from. And it stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love EFT. And I use it a lot in my therapies, along with the spiritual hypnotherapy and EFT to combination together. It's like a double whammy. You know, it's amazing because what it does is, and the ancients knew this, it, it moves energy around the body and out. So if you've got stuck energy, like the stuck energy in that person's knee, it moves it around and out the body. I've used it. Oh, you? I've used it. I'm um, needlephobic. And oh, I had to have a blood test. Yes. And it totally freaked me out. And I went into the surgery, sat down, the nurse was kind of faffing on. And I sat and I went, I'm sorry, I can't do this. And she went, what? I said, I can't do this. I'm, I, I just can't do it. I'm not prepared. So I came out. My husband took a day off. And I went again. And he's pacing around the surgery seat. He said, you what? You're kidding me. I took a bloody day off and you're not going to have this. And I went, well, I'm sorry you took a day off, Tom, but I can't do it. The third time I went, I'm sat in the surgery doing the... Yeah. All of this. And 
And you had it done. You were fine. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 You could. That, thank you for that. Thank you very much. You can be in like a, a dentist surgeon. If you're a bit wary of going in, you can tap on certain parts, and that really helps to relax you. Like the uh, the meridian on the hand. I mean, we don't use the hand a lot these days, but we've always taught uh, the hand at the time. And um, and I was lucky enough actually to say that Gary Craig, who started EFT, he uh, trained 24 what he called masters originally, and I was trained by one of the those 24. So was, and that was so that was that was good. And I was lucky enough to go to the first um, uh, EFT. Uh, world Convention that was in London, I don't know, about 13, 14 years ago. Uh, and that was amazing. In fact, it was so actually, you know, going, talking about going off on one. But it's, it's okay, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. it's okay. When I went to that convention, you had it was quite difficult. You had to queue up early in the morning because there were like these main people that were like the mark, those out of the 24, there was about five of them that were there at this uh, big event. There was 300 people from all over the world there that had come. Um, but you had to line up in the morning to, to say which people you wanted to hear speak. And there was this one particular speaker that I wanted to, and I was quite way back in the line, you know, and thought, well, if I can see them, that would be good. If not, go and see somebody else. But anyway, there was a quite big fellow in front of me. And it got to him, and the woman said to him, I'm sorry, but we're booked up now. You can't, um, you can't see this person. Um, and he went off it. He said, I've come all the way from America to see, and I want to see this person, I want to see her today. And he just, you know, it was really difficult. And she said, she leaned forward, she said, you know, you can tap for that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. So, in my life now, I mean, you know, if I say anything, my daughter would be there, she says, Dad, you know you can tap for that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So, d does that answer about EFT? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, really Brilliant. powerful. It's amazing stuff. Actually, there's one more thing, since you brought it up more, yeah. that I wanted to say um, about EFT, to show you how powerful it is. I once did a regression. Um, again, it was at the Unicorn Tree in uh, Darlington. And this one day, and I was running a little bit late actually, not surprisingly. Um, and this lady, one of her questions was that she'd always thought she'd had a scar down here. And um, you can't, couldn't see anything. I mean, I was looking, you couldn't see a scar, but she felt there was a scar there from being a little girl. She knew she had got a scar there, but you couldn't actually see or feel it. So I asked, again, asked the higher self, what is this to do, you know, why does she feel she's got a scar, a scar there? And the higher self said, um, well, I'll show you. And she showed her again, it was a battle, another battle. And um, she was in this battle and this, she was sort of like bent down, this soldier and his sword and, you know, sliced her head. Anyway, I thought that it all been wound up and, and all the ones that I've done, it's maybe twice it's ever ever happened but with this lady it happened that it hadn't been closed up the feeling that she got from that wound stayed with her now this was on a Friday and on the Sunday she phoned me and said ever since the, the, the aggression I haven't felt good I've had terrible migraines I felt really in a bad way I said okay um, I, I will help you from here this was like Sunday evening, about 8 o'clock. And I said, um, tomorrow morning, you phone me and tell me that you feel much better. And so, anyway, after I put the phone down, I sort of said, right, come on. Um, I need all my crew here. I need all her crew here. And um, I called on them in that sort of way. And I started tapping. Um, and just let it flow, you know, just let it come to you about what you need to say because some people say to me I didn't do any tapping after, since I saw you because I didn't know what to say so don't let what to say bother you it doesn't matter just let it come because when it comes from your heart and just comes in and, and spirits I'll tell you this in a second as well about spirits but 
just let it come to you. So I, I said, you know, even though we did this past half regression and we opened up this, you know, this pain and it, what had happened. Anyway, I did it twice and I thought, right, well, that, that would probably be enough. And at the end of it, what you do, at the end you take a deep breath and you blow it out. And I, I was very animated. I didn't sit down for it. I stood up and I knew I'd got all my, everybody around helping me with this because it was really important. Um, and uh, when I blew out, and I, this is absolutely true, I blew out like that. And hundreds, not just a few, but hundreds and hundreds of tiny little turquoise lights came out of my mouth. Now, I always ask the higher realms, the angels, to transmute any negative energy into light and into love. And I did that before we started, when I called everybody in. And when it came out, I knew that's what it was. And I said, please, I saw that, and that was amazing, but I'm not sure if I believe it. Could you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> and this is something that I always tell my clients. Say, they say, well, look, you know, when I was doing it, I, I'm not sure if I'm, did I make it up? Mm -hmm. Did I make it up? And that's the same with mediums, isn't it? Mediums, some mediums, when they're starting off at least, will always say, you know, has that come from me or has that come from them or, or what? And so I, I was like that. And, I, and yet for years I've been saying to my clients, Accept it, accept it. I, I, I didn't, I thought, well, oh, would you do it again? So I went, oh, and it came again. <laughs> and they did it, they let me have it again. So I must have been a good boy, so they, they showed me again. Because if they hadn't, I would never have talked about it at all, you know, or, or believed it. So that, that's kind of like the scene out of the Green Mile, isn't it? Oh yeah, yes. He takes yeah. the he takes the negative mm -hmm. poison out, out, mm -hmm. of the, out of the person and then he expels it. And it's yeah. like these little uh, fly things. Yeah. Flies, yeah. And just yeah. Now you know why they were flies, because it hadn't been transmuted into light and love. Mm -hmm. I believe it was the energy coming out. Um, yeah, and and if it had been transmuted, but for the film, of course, it had to be. Yeah. The flies. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great analogy, Dave. Mm, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, so I, f I had to mention that. Now, the other thing was, while I think on, um, that spirits are always, always um, with you. They're always talking to you in your ear. Now, I think this might, I might have mentioned this one in the book, but this particular one is, is interesting because this lady was quite adamant. One of her questions was, uh, why does everybody keep saying I need to uh, have a child? Everybody, all my friends or my family keep saying, you need to have a child, you need to have a child. And, she, and that was a question I asked her herself, why does she keep getting asked by all her friends and family, why does she need to have a child? And they said, that was us. That's us telling her friends and putting the thoughts and ideas into their heads and your family to make you have a child. There's a child up here that is waiting for you. <laughs> and they wouldn't normally say that, but they did tell her that because it, it was getting a bit like she needed to have this child. So the spirits are always there, always talking to you, always giving you thoughts and information and, and helping you. So, um, Can I just say that's exactly what happened? Um, just over a year ago, my daughter was keep nagging me, you need to get your house sold, you're going to get a bungalow, you need to get your house sold. And she didn't know where it was coming from. And she went home and she, she thought about it and she thought, it's Chris, my husband. Oh. She was going to come up and say, why am I nagging you, mother? And I go home and I say, I've just nagged her. I'm not going to the rules, I said, but it just used to come out. Well, that would be it. Yeah. That would be it, won't it? Amazing. Mm -hmm. And wow. that it's, I'm so happy here. Yes, really? yes, it's got a really beautiful vibe, oh, hasn't it? Lovely, lovely vibe. I fell in love and with it the minute I walked at the top. Did, yeah. Oh. I thought we'd see yeah. another one. We'd see we? another one, and she kept and saying it's not this no, one. No, no. But this is something um, I did, when I, you know, before the sale went through and everything, and you're still a bit unsure whether you're going to get presumed. <laughs> <laughs> one day, there was one apple on the tree, and it was the last apple that happened to be. 
And one, it, I got it in my head, I thought I'm going to take that apple and keep it, and by the time that turns to, like, uh, mummified, it'll be my house. And I, it was like a claim. And I, oh, I've, still wow. got that, I've still got that apple, it's now like a crusted seed, you know, it's, <laughs> it's all mummified, it's in my car still. Wow. But, but I, I got it in my head, if I take that apple, nobody else will want this house, it's mine. <laughs> wow, wow. And I told a, Niger a, a, a girl from Zimbabwe, I told her this story, and she said, boy, what you did was you cleaned it. And that's yes. what we do, she <laughs> says. You go oh. into a place and you say, this is my house. This is my house. This is mine. Wow. I want yes. it. And yeah. You put it out there. Yeah, absolutely. And we do it all the time now, don't we? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah, we do it for Paul. Yeah. Paul's Angel, I always use a Paul's Angel. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting you. Not at all, please. I'm happy for you to, as I said. I, um, you might want to take a break soon. Yeah, to you. yeah, absolutely, I will do. I just want to, um, I want to give us enough time to do our thing afterwards, yeah. which there, there will be, I'm sure. Um, <coughs> so, I ask people um, to write down, if they're coming to have a, a regression, some questions that they would like answers to. And I know some of you here have been and had regressions with me before, so you will, you will know that anyway. So just bear with me. Um, so, questions like, people. some of the questions that people write down, think, for instance, they want to know, have I been good or bad? Yeah. <laughs> um, I know the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, I mean I've got so many um, different stories about that. I haven't really got time now, to be honest with you, for those. But, um, well, you're all me too. There was, there, well, there was one, one uh, lady that came, um, not, not very old, and uh, she went back to being on a farm. And it very often starts in a nice way, you know, I'm on a farm, I'm a young girl, I'm tiptoeing through the, the corn. But then she got to, you then move somebody forward. So what happens is with a regression, when, you, when, you, when they actually uh, connect with who they were in that life, so that, like I said, you step back, who you were in that life a step forward. And what I meant to say to you was before, it's just come back to me, was um, that I believe, you know how I said it wasn't a memory? I don't believe it is. I believe that it is the actual soul of that person that's come. Now, let's say you're a psychic, a medium person who is going to give a reading. Now, I was at Vivian's shop up at Heaven and Earth uh, a few years ago, and there was this guy sat there who was a medium, and um, I was talking to him, and suddenly he sort of turned his head and then turned back again. And I said, what was that? And he said, oh, uh, Vivian's doing a reading in half an hour, and that was her auntie, uh, what, the, the lady that's having the reading, that was her auntie, and she's come just to be ready for, for the reading, you know, so that, she could, so that Vivian can talk to her auntie, you know. And other people that, because I always like to ask others to watch the regression, if possible. So sometimes there's entourages come in the house when I say, you know, you can bring other people if you want to to watch, but if they're interested in it, uh, and to support you, you know. Um, and I can remember this one, one time particularly, because this was a lot of people, it was about eight, you know. <laughs> uh, the, per the person that was having the regression, this lady walks in first, and, hello. And then, so, well, this is me husband, this is me grandchildren, this is me granddaughter, this is a friend. And I had to sort of bring... <laughs> and this was going to be for next year. <laughs> bring extra chairs in, you know. I mean, it didn't bother me, but because I, I know that it's a good thing, because um, it means that they were then open up to this stuff, you see. People that are interested, but they may not be really... They might be a bit sceptical still, and so watching a regression is, I can assure you, is a, a really uh, something that you know can really open you up from being sceptical to. I always like to call people you know that come open sceptics. I think that's probably a good word. For them. Um, yeah. So this girl, very very quickly, this girl, um, she, when she moved forward, she was about eighteen, and she was being forced to marry. Uh, 
Now they worked on the farm, they weren't the actual farm owners and she was being forced to marry the son of the farm owners and she didn't want to marry him, he, she, he wasn't very nice apparently. Um, and then when I moved forward to find out if she did marry him, she was at the wedding ceremony bawling her eyes out, you know, um, having to get married. And then I moved forward um, to the next most important event and she um, said, uh, she had a bit of a smile on her face. And she said, um, she said, uh, I said, how's your husband? And she, she sort of went, mm, he's not very well. Um, and then I, I, I had an inkling what was going on because right at the beginning she had said that she loved herbs and she, when she was little girl, <laughs> <laughs> and she, she learned about all these and what they did and everything. Anyway, uh, it turned out that she did poison him. Brad slowly poisoned him. Now I found that really, I found it really interesting. When she went up in the higher realms, I sort of asked the higher self, so was there um, anything about that? You know, did she have to pay back anything about that? And they more or less sort of said, well, he was really nasty to her. Um, he was really pretty evil and, and it was, um, it, it, we talk about karma and stuff, you know, and I know that karma is there, I know that karma now, is, a lot of it is being released, and we let, we, they let they the higher. I think the higher realms realise that if they didn't let a lot of people off with a certain amount of it, we would never ascend. No, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's also a natural law, isn't it? He was the one that instigated it, and she was doing something that was protecting yeah. herself. She didn't yeah. start it. Yeah, so. and I also think, Wanda, that it's also was to do with contracts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Sometimes we have contracts, especially, I'm talking now about the, um, the uh, countries where they still do enforce uh, marriage, where, you know, um, and very often those marriages are actually arranged in the higher realms. Mm -hmm. And so if you do negate on them, then there is comeback from that, you know, which is a bit mm -hmm. sad. I've had a few dealings with that at least three or four now, very, very sad cases. Um, anyway, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I've, you know, there's, there's so much to talk about here, but I won't go on. Um, you just have to come back here. So we've got so many, oh, bless you. <laughs> um, so on the arrival, I explain about the hypnosis to people so they understand it, so I'll, I'll do that you know, in the next part. Um, we then do the induction where, where they arrive in another time, another place, another them. We get, they get the feelings, what age are you, are you male or female? So we get general information while they're still trying to get into who they are in that lifetime. You know? um, and as I say, we pass through different events in that life. And then we get to the final hour. There's always a point where we move them forward, you know, and to an hour before they're going to leave their physical body in that life. And I can't remember anybody ever, and I want to say, is that okay with you? There isn't anybody that said, no, they've all, all, all been okay with it. Um, and we, I move them forward, you know, and I say, and they go, oh, I'm feeling so tired, I've, I've just had enough, I'm ready to go. And I say, how old are you? They say, 37. <laughs> um, because... <coughs> Get a grip. Sorry? Get a grip. <laughs> <laughs> because in those days, of course, you know, hundreds of years ago, 37 was considered mm -hmm. older yeah. than it is today. Yeah. You know? Same as Christ. When they crucified Christ, we think it was a young man, and he wasn't. But he wasn't at that time. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Christ, so was, Christ was 88 when he died. Was he? Yes. Mm. He died in Srinagar in Kashmir. His tomb's there. Yeah, Jai is it Jaipur or Jodhpur? Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Number of infinity. That's what uh, yes. the Avatar Sai Baba said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's mm -hmm. fascinating. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so, we take him to the final hour, and then we let the hour pass, and um, 
Then this is an interesting part where they feel themselves leaving their physical body and going up into the light. Sometimes it's very, very emotional because they might have been very close to a, a loved one in that life who had passed and you know, you've moved them forward to different events in their life and it might be that they've just lost somebody that was really close to them and that person has come to take them through the light. This is a, always a wonderful moment. Um, and then when we get into the higher realms, we uh, get them to, once they've sort of settled in a little bit, you know, they, I, I get them to sit with their soul group. Now people talk about soulmates a lot, but really we have uh, soul groups, just like we have a, 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 our earth family here, we have a spiritual family, a spiritual family that will live for, you know, thousands of, of years. Um, and we go back to them and we, they like often to sit in a circle and so I always ask the person to just count how many are in your soul group you know and sometimes there are I mean popular numbers are 8, 12, 20 um, sometimes they're bigger groups but not that often it's very rare that people come from really huge groups and then I get the higher self I, I, I say to them could you ask your higher self to step forward into the middle of your soul group? And when they do, are they male or female? And um, generally, the higher self will step forward, and generally we, they can sense or see who it, who it is, whether it's male or female. I ask for names. Sometimes, you know, it's a bit iffy whether you get a name, because they don't really use names That's upstairs, right. do they? Mm -hmm. They use uh, just their energy, <coughs> is who they are, you know, so we recognise everybody from not a physical appearance or from a name, but from yeah, their please. energy and their vibration, you see. And so they're, they're a bit sometimes reluctant to give them, sometimes they make a name up, you know, what's your higher name, your, your higher self, Eric, you know, <laughs> which... Um, so... Uh, we talk, we start, I say to them, would you ask your higher self if they're happy to ask, answer a few questions from me today, you know, please. And um, they generally, you get a yes. Sometimes you get no, you know, they're not really happy, but generally you, they, they are happy to speak to you. And so then the list of questions comes up, you see. That's where, where the questions get answered. So you can't answer the questions during the past life itself. Because you, they, they wouldn't know the answers to it, like what is my path and things like that from a, somebody in the future. Um, but this is something that you can get answers to from your higher self. Um, and then, uh, and sometimes when people come back out of it and, and leave, they're still talking to their higher self. It's wonderful because you've connected them to, to their higher self. And some people may be aware of their guides and things, but. But this is a great opportunity sometimes to actually be connected to your guides, you know. Mm. And so I'm still talk as they're walking out the door, still talking to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny. Right, so, is there any questions on yeah, past lives? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Can I just ask if, if, a, if a soul is, is given permission to step back and, and let a, a past soul come, come forward and... Yes. and uh, express themselves of a previous life, do they in their previous life have some recollection of when they went into the future and were regressed? No. 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 What tends to happen is, and it doesn't happen all the time, it happens some of the time. I mean, if everyone is different really in, in some senses. But what I would say is that when you become that person, you very often do, it depends on the depth of chance that you're in a lot of the time, but if you, you can connect really powerfully with that person and you've become that person. And this is again why I like other people to watch, because they can then sense, oh, you know, mum's never normally doesn't talk like that or, or move in that certain way, you know. They've really become that person and sort of reliving that life. And it, so, so it's really like the person's um, personality of that previous life is, comes forward, but really it's the same person. It's the same soul, yeah. yeah. I always like to think, if you imagine, I mean, your soul, 
okay, as a jigsaw puzzle, say a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, it's probably a lot, lot more pieces than that, but think of your soul as a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. Your life now as you is one of those pieces, all right? And you've got parts of you, as I said before, you're a multi-dimensional being, your soul is huge. And that's why very often when people come here, they say, right, this is my plan, this is what I'm going to do when I get here. Um, but they don't have all the energy to do it because they haven't given enough of their energy to this lifetime. You see, they needed a bit more. Um, and so they, they guess, I'll need maybe this much of my energy to be part of this lifetime, that's how much I'll need. But they get a bit stuck halfway through and realise that they need a bit more really. You know. But, sorry Dave. Yeah. No, well, did you want to... No, I, I, I feel, does that answer your question yes, at all? Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, just getting back to the soul contract thing, because this is a massive thing, the soul mm -hmm. contract. Yeah. Where you were saying, it just really kind of come to the forefront the last few years. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, um, we have a mutual friend, uh, Elizabeth and Keith, a, a, a Mexican called Nacho, and I once had a conversation with them about, um, like, kind of agreements soul contracts type thing uh, about when we make these contracts do we make these contracts of how we're going to actually pass and quite a lot of souls pass at one time mm. in, in tragic events mm. and sometimes the events seem out of their control mm. even no they're not that. No. they're yeah. not they definitely not and, yeah, and that was the crux of the mm -hmm. question and uh, the answer as well as what he told us that uh, it, it is all contractual mm -hmm. that we'll make these yeah. we'll make these agreements yes. yeah. even to the even to the very point of how we're actually mm -hmm. going to pass yeah. and things like that yes. even though it might might not mm -hmm. seem any sense to it no um, it is it is far more mm -hmm. Organised than we would ever imagine. Well, what Dave's just said there reminded me of a scene in the Shirley MacLaine film, Out on the Limb, I think it was called, or something. And the bloke that was teaching her about, you know, uh, what goes on in the spirit world and that. And there was a, an incident where a bus went off a bridge and all the people on it died. And she th said, Oh, that's tragic. And he said, They've all agreed to that. Mm -hmm. So, talking about understandings, my understanding at this time would be that they're all um, yeah. contracted. Yeah, yeah. 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 and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. See yeah. that young girl who's just died, that mm. trying to make sense of that. Yes. And how mm. she was in that place at that time. Yeah. And that mm. person was there at that time. Mm. And then I wondered. Um, was she, did she agree to that in order to bring about change? And now there's a hu huge uprising of consciousness around women's mm. safety. Yeah. And I think that will just grow yeah. around the world. Yes. So that, yeah. her, that was her life's yes. purpose. Yes, I, I, I believe that. Yeah, that's coming true. up now, isn't it? Mm. Women yeah. being yeah. 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 protected. So it's it's in India. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. all over the world, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Wow. yeah. I want, I want a quick question. Yes. Just when you went to OCD, I used to work in adult mental health about 30 years ago for 10 years. And um, there were people there who had, I worked in a hospital rehabilitation, and people were, had all sorts of different um, diagnoses. And I used to meet people and think, um, when other people were saying, oh God, look, listen to what they're coming out with, and I used to wonder, are these people psychic? Because they were mm -hmm. talking about things that they could see, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, so I'm just wondering that, if the you mentioned about OCD in past life, and I'm wondering if that would be the case for someone with bipolar or bi with schizophrenia or mm -hmm. whatever. I'm just wondering if there was a connection. My mm -hmm. feeling is um, I have dealt with it on a few occasions with things like uh, schizophrenia. Um, is that it is. It is uh, a channel that they have, and there's no doubt to me, in my mm. mind. And that what the drugs do, basically, is close the channel yeah. down, so yeah. that they can't... Uh, 
Community. Yeah. The, 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 the problem is that when you have a channel, it can be open to lower and higher. Yeah. You see, that's the problem. And um, you can let the, the lower energies in and, you know, uh, it's, it, is, it can be a, a problem. And yet psy psychiatrists do know the difference now. They reckon, starting to recognise the difference. Oh, are they? Because yes. I once asked yeah. it and they said, oh, they'll never understand. No, well, it seemingly oh, there's, well, there's a change. That's good to And they start to recognise oh, recognise really the right. difference, yeah. yeah. Right. Because they lose their creativity and everything yeah. about them, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I think it's probably time for a little break. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> it is just, just coming up to six o'clock. So. It's been brilliant. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much.